okay great okay so let's uh, continue okay so when i run uh, the last test case whatever we developed uh, it ended up till here and the homework uh, i did the 50 percent of homework which is validating this one and why we are validating validating is because we want to make sure everything is working according to the requirement we just don't navigate through the application right that is not the actual test so you need to validate and uh, by uh, whatever the requirement says so requirement says the registration confirmation page must mention dear and first name last name comma okay that's that's a requirement now in order to check this requirement we have to navigate to this page so we have to fill the registration form and come this that is just navigation so after the navigation you still have to validate it because otherwise it wouldn't be called the testing actually because the requirement says so and so and you have to validate it so manually you would be doing the same validation manually by looking with eyes and verifying and then take the screenshots or whatever by automation you have to use the xpath and stuff like that so that's exactly what we did we captured this elements xpath and stored in page objects i'll just briefly go through it and this is the xpath it is just like any other object even though it's text it is still an object and we stored it here and in the page flows we also dealt with it here correct so we know what is the actual what is the expected value expected value is coming from requirement so that you have to know there is no other option you must know it because you would have read the requirement or uh, beforehand that is that is a must there is no alternative to this requirement what is the spelling so this is coming from the requirement so expected result how do you know right answer is you must know from the requirement there is no other option actual value you need to capture using the selenium web driver again and that we can do using get text method so we already created reusable function for it if everybody remembers it the simply is driver dot find element by x path and apply the appropriate method and for this text the appropriate method would be get text because you don't there is no click you can't click on the text you can't uh, select value from it the only option remains is to capture the text isn't it so the option uh, the appropriate function for this is get text and we applied and basically we created a reusable function for it so that we can call it right so now if i go back here exactly i operated uh, using operation operations of op is equal to new operations instance i called it and pass appropriate arguments values driver and the xpath itself then what it does it actually gives me the value whatever is the value this is returned to me the whole value so that i can put it in a variable called actual value so what is actual value actual value is the value which is encountered runtime so i am running this executing this so whatever i encounter that is called actual value now i stored it in actual value and i already have the expected value now the validation is nothing but you compare both of these okay and if both are exactly similar if both are matching then you call it pass and you print it or do whatever you want to do with it now we will do more reporting advanced reporting later but for the time being let's print it to the console if any of these are not matching a slightly including space is not matching comma is not displayed or capital or small case is a mismatch then it would immediately fail it so fail and dear communication so let we can print it this is our this in our control so we can print whatever we want to do so it passed now next thing i asked you is to do the same thing for this note because there is another requirement right so that says after in the registration confirmation page no note must mention the correct username that is given by the user during the registration let's say that is the requirement requirement id 00x002 let's say okay 
where, where you are reading this requirement from, I already told you right before uh, in the very beginning of this session. Where these requirements are coming from? BRS document, business requirement specification document. You just go through that again. You have to remember everything is connected now. So you read this requirement and you have to validate this, right? So now you see you bifurcate this into a bunch of uh, sections. Now you see note your username is still this. It is a constant. There is nothing which is dynamic. Now what is dynamic key is this one because whatever you mention in during the station that data the test data you are mentioning that has to be printed here. If it is like uh, Ramesh, then your username is Ramesh, right? This is dynamic. Now we have to validate it same way that we have validated the the this one the addressing portion now we have to validate the note portion also okay so i guess nobody did this because otherwise you would have oh, said it so we will do it right now okay but i will ask you the questions you are going to answer and okay so first things first what we have to do first things whenever you encounter an object what you have to do what should come into your mind yes you have to capture this sex path right that is the first thing you have that you need to do so we we'll capture the x path of this now you see if you are able to highlight this single portion you are right on it okay otherwise sometimes it uh, selects a whole thing like this this whole thing is an object too and this could be a problem but it's a little difficult to find out so in which case you have to capture the whole thing and extract whatever is needed from it so in the string utils in java string test i told you right how to extract the partial substring so we will have to go through that but for now we are good so in future we will encounter these things so like if you are uh, capturing the bunch of text and you need to extract particular piece of text from it you will have to use the string util so we will do that later so for now we are good okay so i am selecting it again okay so then control f and it opens the uh, xpath validator for you now you start typing okay how what is the first thing you need to type we have been doing this for a while right what double is that double slash correct what does double slash mean relative path relative path that's right so relative path means it's coming from html and i don't want to mention till from html so i'm cutting it to descendant okay now tell me what is the x path because i am going to ask you questions you are going to answer it yes what is next B okay. Any brackets? You have to mention everything clearly. Bracket. Third bracket. No bracket. Okay. B. Now what do you see? There are two Bs. Okay, two bolts. Mm. Okay, one of two. Now you have to because D is a also B, right? This type is B actually. So you have to reselect. This is a standard procedure. So now again select. Okay. Now what do you type? Contain any brackets now yeah yeah third bracket third third bracket. Bracket. okay now contains okay now what at the rate any brackets again you have to because double, i'm asking uh, you, question, bracket, yeah. double, you have to say bracket yes uh, now at the rate correct you're on right on it but you're missing some yeah text. Then, the text so text doesn't have at the rate so what is it text yeah. Yeah. otherwise you are right if other than text you have to use at the rate now what take note anything after comma quotes or something yeah there is one yeah hello well then note note yeah we are taking partial note should be fine yeah and bracket close and another bracket close then bingo you got a one of one minutes okay now tell me what should i do go back to the selenium go back to selenium then copy and paste 
no don't copy and paste tell me because <laughs> you can't say that in the interview copy and paste so public you create a variable hmm. for it right so my variable signature should be public static final string and type of object which is text no. and name of the object which is you can do say note that should be fine right now and just yeah leave it empty and come back no, here we can copy it. It. copy it and paste it over okay so now step one is over that is capturing the xpath now what what's next so now we have to just we just located it we haven't operated upon it right now we have to operate where do you navigate through this and do the operations on this mm -hmm. go to operation page no operations is just a infrastructure mm -hmm. we already created some reusable functions for it that is already there so the next if you haven't created yeah you definitely go to infrastructure and create it so we have already created get text now you have go you have to go to the page flows right and yes. here now what you have to do is you have to create a function or modify the existing okay. function okay now we have create we have created a function for register confirmation for dear so what we'll do is we will create another function mm -hmm. because you are going to tell me we will type it no copy paste okay now tell me what should i create it as you have to create a function what function this is for validation of Oh, it's okay. Now tell me. Function. Signature. Yeah. How do you write the function? Public. Yes. Static. Is it no void? You don't need to create a static. Okay. Static. Let's just create non-static. Public void. And what is the function name? Note. Validation of note. Let's see what the function name we have given. Uh, okay. So we are saying the other function as register confirm underscore dear so let's stick to the same naming convention because otherwise it would be different so register confirm underscore note let's see every time you have to start the function name with a small letter and each new word must be captured this is called camel case it's like a camel hump or something like this right and underscores are optional you can use or you don't have to use so this confirmation is for note so let's be specific okay then do you want to uh, pass any arguments web driver yeah. because web driver has to be passed every time so that's a must okay now bracket open now you have to define it we just created a signature of the function now you have to define the function how do you define it so definition here is uh, should should contain the operation what is the operation on the text obviously capturing get text so now how do you get text get text then is driver dot yeah you can do the driver dot find element so let's do that also yeah. so other if you do not have in uh, infrastructure function you would do driver dot find element by x path then apply the appropriate function so you're right let's do that also. Have yeah, yeah i will show you both options okay. so that uh, by x path then you pass the x path expression from uh this one register confirmation let's pass that register from page objects dot and this is the x path and come back dot the operation would be get text right and that's it so you actually store this value because get text returns you so you will store this in a value called string let's say actual value actual value underscore note okay okay now we don't have to do this because we already have created a reusable function for get text so now how do i call that from interest 
Okay, so where this function is coming from? Operations. So don't worry about the instantiation. Operations is instantiated inside the class, outside the function, right? So we all yeah, so we just have to call it op dot. What is the function? Then uh, um text. Get text. Get text. You have to remember. I mean, you will remember if you use it. That's fine. So now driver is passed and xpath expression must come from page objects from yes. here. So because these are static, I can just call by the class name, which is register confirm just control space and you don't have to type it completely. No, no. page objects dot. Now what is the variable? <laughs> Second one. Second no. one. Correct. Okay, so now everything is inside the function what to do you don't have to mention anything now you have to do one more thing because this might return or might not return so what it is doing is it is returning because get text must return something otherwise there is no option right so now we will store it in a variable called actual value because runtime whatever you capture that should be called actual value okay now we have the actual value now you have to already know the expected value where from from the requirement. Yeah, BRS document, yes. Or SRS document, system requirements, specification or business requirement. So we will call this expected value clearly. Underscore note. And my requirement says that has to be something like this. So let's copy this and bifurcate this according to our thing. So your username. I will put it in the quotes. Double quote. Uh, note colon. Yeah, double quote. Your username is automation tester. This has to be this. Okay, and semicolon. Okay, so what we are doing is we are actually hard coding. This could be anything, not just automation user, but anything. So we will parameterize this later. For the time being, we will keep it hard coded because uh, that should be part of enhancement. So we will do the enhancements after this. Okay, so now we have both expected value and actual value. Now we have to perform the validation. So how do we validate now? We need to compare it. Like, compare. Like so how do we compare two values in Java? If a statement. If else. If statement. Correct. Yeah. So if expected value underscore dot equals is a function which compares and takes another argument you want to compare this to and that is automatically shown here so yes. you don't have to actual value so that means if both are equal now do whatever you want to do now what i want to do is just print it like this so this out and i let's say pass and note confirmation and let's print whatever the actual value is. So actual value note. So this will print in case it is passed. And you want to take care of the failure case also. This is a positive uh, case and error case. Error case is the negative case in case it fails. What do you want to print? This is out. Let's print the same thing, but just alter the pass to fail. So I'll copy this and paste it over here. And let's say instead of pass, which will fail. And note confirmation is actual value is this. So okay, in case of failure, you want to show both actual and expected so that the whoever is reviewing this, they will know, hey, okay, both are not equal. That's why it's failed and see actual value plus is is not same as plus expected value so this will be very clear okay let's try and run two times one with the past and one with the fail so let's go ahead Okay, so when you run, you run the test. So, and in the test, you must call this page flows, otherwise it won't work, right? 
and fortune <clears throat> and we have already called register confirmation for dear keyword or dear note right we haven't called that is the last and final step first step is export capturing then you define in the page flows then finally you call these page flows in the test otherwise it wouldn't call now for the register confirmation validation for dear statement we have already called it now we have to call the note statement so tell me how do we call so i'll call right under the homework section okay so how do we call where is the function we have created it is in the page flows and the fun you need to know the class name and the function name in order to call and the class name is register confirm page okay and the function name is register confirm underscore node okay so now this is not static so obviously you have to call it in a non-static way so yeah. let's call it in non-static way so non-static way you how do you call using the new keyword this yes. it's an object mm -hmm. so you the same new register confirmation page so obviously when you control space it will show more than one option so carefully choose so that's why we named everything clearly so this is object okay so don't choose it Mm -hmm. page flows is the one you have to choose because you have to call the page flows in the test case remember mm -hmm. that and dot what is the function you no, just now created the function name this one, isn't it note correct so yeah. the function name is that and it is automatically taking the driver so no need to worry about that mm -hmm. okay so now we are good we are ready to test it okay so we are done we didn't close it so that's why it didn't close now it says note validation is pass note your username is automation user okay so let's say uh the requirement is little bit different or uh, how lit how different let's make it like let's make it different okay so let's say your username is automation user note colon right so instead of colon requirement says there should be hyphen like this okay then obviously the runtime will be the value will be different because the requirement says something and the runtime the developer has coded in such a way that it prints to the object uh, html page something else so what it will do when we run the automation automated script it will fail okay so now let's see that failure uh, test case also okay to ramesh ramesh you asked this question right when you right click on the test case you should see these two options you are only seeing this option correct so why you are not show seeing this option i'll tell you you may be right clicking on these one of these pages okay you must only right click in the test you are getting it right and that test must have main function okay i'll show you uh, ramesh are you on can you respond okay anyways for example i want to uh, can i execute this class this can i execute no. this i cannot because it doesn't have main function so let's try and execute see this i think ramesh must have done this so when i try to run it doesn't show the option at all because it couldn't find the main function i uh, clearly told you main function is a function which should have executable statements if main function is not there in the class the eclipse is intelligent enough to not to show you the option to run at all so that's why you don't see it at all okay so you may be making this mistake or yes i understand now have this main function so just make sure that 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 itself should resolve your problem okay so now i see the job that means it has a main function simple as it even if you go to old selenium google example it has a main function that means i will be able to run it if i go to any other class which doesn't have a main function it will not even show you so you cannot run it okay clear okay now 
go back to the old test. Okay, now let's run it. We have made the change for negative testing. Now let's run it. Okay, so what do you see? What do you see? In case of failure, this is how it should look like. What it looks like is your node confirmation is failed, and this is the expect actual value, and this is the expected value. See, the difference is clear. Okay, so that's a failure. Okay, let's not fail it because uh, that would be intentional fail. Okay, so let's go to this and correct it. Should we? Yeah, right. Yeah. So we changed the expected value deliberately so that it will fail. Now we'll correct it. Now we'll pass it. So just make sure. It has spaces and everything correctly. So notes, there is no space immediately colon. So let's remove the space. So that's it. Okay, so we can we will go forward. Okay, for uh, flight reservation and stuff. Actual flight reservation is not done yet. But before this, I will show you some uh, this uh, framework level changes. Okay, so first thing is we are storing all the constants right within your test this is not good okay so what we will do is we will create another package called data so the constants all the stuff must go into data package it's not the test data it's just the info uh, the setup kind of data okay so let's create this data right within the source folder everything must stay in source folder the project name slash source and immediately package so it will create name oh, uh, sangam i have a question yes go on. yeah uh, what is the uh, problem uh, i am facing that uh, i i have difficulties that what is going in which page which class so can you please uh, for my for my sake can you please make a diagram so and show us which locator or wh which one going to go which class and which package so that i can uh, capture it i actually sometimes i i okay. feel difficult uh, okay. okay so you you actually this is common quite common for the newbies so they will even though they understand later it will be confusing for them like uh, which is called where right what is the flow yeah so you want the di diagrammatical right so uh, textually i can, i just showed you the setup actually is otb okay this is how it calls I, i'll mm -hmm. try to find the diagram but i don't know. okay let's let's do the diagrammatically also that's a good question mm -hmm. okay so first thing is you created okay let's go from the backward then we'll call from the backward so test case is here right so test case calls Test All case what directly test case calls the page flow. This is a page flow. So I am just putting test case calls page flow. Correct. And page flow calls. Okay. It's not called call. So just be careful. I'm going from the reverse way. Mm -hmm. Test case calls page flow. Mm -hmm. And page flow must call. Let's see what this calls. Page flow calls what? Page flow calls bunch of things. Okay, not just one. Actually, to be precise, it calls three things. Mm -hmm. Page flow calls immediately infrastructure. Okay, see, mm -hmm. so text is coming from infrastructure. Let's mm -hmm. control space and see. You jump to this one. So let's mm -hmm. go back to page flow, home page or something. Click so that is directly calling 
infrastructure so let's call that okay now infrastructure calls anything does infrastructure call anything let's see infrastructure doesn't call anything because it has to be out of the box totally generic code it just calls web driver and we, we are passing the web driver from the test case so no calling and infrastructure doesn't call export expression we are just passing this is totally out of the box so we'll come back to the page flows again like i said page flows calls bunch of things okay I, to be precise three so let's come back here okay let's go to the home page that will be easy there's just one link okay now page flows calls infrastructure which we call and it also calls page objects see this is coming from page object so if you want to make sure i'll control control t it jump to the page object so page flows calls infrastructure as well as the page objects and page objects okay now it might call more things also depending upon what you are passing so for the timing we are passing this data whatever you type in the text box you are passing the data in hard coded way but going forward we will pass this value from other part of the uh, framework which is called data pool okay so data pool so this page flows must also call another another thing that is data pool okay so yeah <clears throat> and one more thing is page flow might also call might actually one more util okay. util we haven't used in uh, for now it is just empty but we will create because for uh, reading the data from excel spreadsheet or data pool we have to create we have to define it we, which we haven't defined yet but we will and that way it will also make a call to the util so right now i would say page flows let's come from the right side now okay now you will understand uh, better now page flows page flow calls what page flow calls infrastructure page objects data pool and util now you call this page flows in the test case that is how we define okay so is it clearer now so all the data uh, we put in, oh, different kind of data like you util or right. and the uh, different pages information like uh, locate locator and uh -huh. click links so we put this things in page flows and right. then from test we are going to call it to execute it correct yep yep you okay. got it okay okay i'll show you more diagrammatically because i i still think you didn't understand completely i made a diagram in the test plan so let me show you okay this must have the diagram so yeah there you go. Okay. okay okay so this is the uh, naming convention is a little bit different so but you can make like this if you want so just replace these names appropriately test case calls page flows right mm -hmm. so my test case is this one these are the test cases okay so let's think i call these test case in the master script and store the result but that is okay for now we are not there yet but the test case is calling three things one from the library so think of this library as the infrastructure because it's a library function in java just like the usual functions and all those so these are the it is calling the library and it is calling the other things which are called page objects and utils okay so let's think of this as this and other things which is data pool so this so my test case is calling three things this okay so here i bifurcate bifurcated further instead of test case i created the page flows first and made it call infrastructure page objects data pool and util and i called the page flows functions in the test case okay so that is actually flow don't worry you will understand the more uh, time you spend on this or you practice you will understand there is no confusion it's actually very simple 
but uh, but at the same time it is complex to yeah so i will tell you a technique so in art if you want to see this in real time so just go to the test case that will be easier you go in reverse way that will be easier so what i'm doing here in the test case i am simply calling home page dot registration so click on it where it is calling in the registration it is a page flow being called in the test case and page flows calls what here infrastructure simple as it page flow says what do you want to do with it object you want to navigate it and come back to the page flows again it also calls calls page object because for the page page flow you have to mention what to do and how to do what to do is i want to click link and how to do how to locate you have to give it the x path so this is where i'm passing the x path so it jumps to page objects okay so if it is a little bit complicated like set text it also shows what do you want to pass that will be coming from utils and stuff like that so it is very simple here okay i showed you three ways right now we will show here diagrammatically you can actually make an arrow and stuff like that uh, let's take the screenshot okay so go to the paint brush i think arrows uh, arrows will make you understand a little better so let's say this is our framework okay, i'll cut it to here okay so this is a framework now let's see how we are calling using the arrows so test case this is a test case correct so test case what are being called page flows correct so i'm calling page flows here and page flows calls for calls what infrastructure right first thing page flows calls is the infrastructure this and page flows also calls page objects correct so page objects are going to page flows and you also call the setup is directly called in the test case i didn't show you but setup is directly called in the test case if you remember okay if you remember if i go to test case where is the setup setup is in the beginning correct see this is the setup i am directly calling the test run setup launch browser and storing the web driver in the web driver instance in the test case itself so that my test case is driven by driven by the web driver so that is in the test case and utils going forward we will also call utils in the page flows itself so another arrow from here so this diagram may not be the perfect diagram but you will understand at yes. least i hope you understand Oh, yeah, and yeah. That is a little bit. So you can take a screenshot. I'll also put it in the Google Drive. Okay, so let's come back. So don't worry. The more you practice, the more you get it. It's not a rocket science. Uh, okay. Now, like I said, we cannot hard code these values in the test case, which is very uh, awkward. Okay, it's not a developer standard. So that's why we created a data and these are actually constant so let's create a class called constants this is the standard mechanism okay so we are not making the stuff up okay and this should not contain main already i told you only the main should be there in the test case so just create it all right now in the test uh, in the class called constants we will create some private static final <coughs> strings and first thing we want to store is the browser type let's say okay so the browser type is chrome right we can configure it later but for the timing we'll store in the constant so and this will call browser type and the value is chrome all small okay okay so we will first create the variables and call them 
uh, at one time and the second thing is the url for the test because in a given project there will be only one base url right all you do is just append just take the base url and append slash something dot html something but base url remains the same and you will take it and store it in a constants let's call this base url why we make it private at this point uh okay that's a good question let's see if uh, we can actually do this constants dot okay so obviously you have to make it public otherwise you cannot access it because like i told you if you make it private what will happen you cannot access it outside the class so which outside is right the class. yes so now you will be able to so that's a good question i intentionally put private so that somebody <laughs> asked the question and you did good job so first thing is i am calling the browser type and that's how you call it instead of storing the chrome word here that is hard coding otherwise okay so in case with the advantage is in case you to change the browser type you immediately go there and change it here just one time for example there are 100 test cases and you want to run all the 100 test cases in the chrome browser let's say right and in each test case if you mention chrome and suddenly if you want to uh, be able to run these test cases in the firefox browser you have to go to 100 test cases and change it correct so that is cumbersome and if you just store it in here you just change it in one place so store it in one place change it in one place and same thing browser type uh, base url also i'll take it from here and just store it in here. so same thing using the constants dot browser base url okay so not only this we can also store other stuffs like uh, wherever we hard coded this is to do away with hard coding okay so we are trying to avoid the hard coding i think we have hard coded bunch of paths in the setup so let's go there all right and see bingo so here this is the path so this is not good initially it's okay learning purpose but this is not good so let's cut it and go to the constants and create another variable so this is this should stay on the top of everything public static final string and i want to call it uh, what do you want to call it chrome driver path right so one thing is you can put all uh, constants in all caps that is a standard nomenclature so let's do that chrome driver underscore path equals okay so likewise i want to make this also all caps browser so i'll tell you advantage with this in a moment browser type uh it's better you avoid the underscores but if you prefer uh, the underscore will help you in segregating these two words so you can use it that's not a problem base url okay so let's go back to the setup first because that's where we have to make the constant dot okay chrome driver path so now in case your chrome drive you want to store this chrome driver in uh, c drive selenium drivers some of you are storing in other place right? so you can immediately come here and change it here just one time just one change will affect all of this so that will be again easier okay let's go back and change these capital letters here so see automatically it suggests you so that is the chrome i mean eclipse intelligence change to chrome driver oh sorry chrome driver no 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 this is a url right okay url is actually here this url let's see if we can go to the yeah 
so i actually went for the wrong suggestion so browser type here change to normally the all the uh, uh, appropriate suggestions the, the one you want to take will be on the top so the order is important here so browser type that's it okay the advantage of using of capital letter c is you can immediately identify without having to go to its uh, uh, its class okay hey this is a constant the all caps if, he, if i go here and see i don't have to go here and see if it is constant or final or something so that is to indicate if it is uh, final or not and final means you cannot change its value so just by looking at it all caps and you can easily figure out that it is a constant and you are not supposed to change its value and it is final already so you cannot change it right okay so that is one thing uh, and other thing is we have okay so other things i'll come later so let's get going with this automation okay so we have registered ourselves right now it's time to register the i mean book the flights and the link is flights here go here and see so let's come back and rerun this thing so that you can use the credentials i guess the credentials will be intact okay so i will take 10 more minutes and end i think yeah we have wasted the first half hour right so we'll take yeah okay so what we are going to do is we are going to click on flights and it will directly take us to the flight finder okay so that way whatever we registered with the credentials that will be intact i mean we those will not be lost otherwise we have to log in that's fine too you can actually try to log in with the same credentials but like i said this site does not store your credentials there is no database uh, maintained this is just a dummy site so might not work okay anyway so let's we clicked on the flight so we'll click it again because we want to capture its x path so other shortcut to go to the dom is right click on the page and inspect so i want to inspect this object and i just right click on it <clears throat> okay so it directly goes there and do it again control f okay so again you have to capture its x path how do you do that double slash double slash and then what is the type of the object a a because it's hyperlink and this will show all the hyperlinks now you have to do it again click on it okay now tell me because you are all expert experts by now so tell me contains no first you have to open bracket big bracket bracket then contains okay so Cancel. now there are bunch of properties and value combinations so you want to choose one of them which is easier for you why at the red property flight is the value right what is the property name hrf so you want to go for uh, flights you don't want to go for hf right that is fine but uh, what is the property name for flights what the name flights import no 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 add the red to me Stack. I told you right. If uh, property name is not given by default, it's the text property. Text. Yes, text. Okay. Text. So yeah. Yeah. Then the okay. close. So closed and type closed. One of one. Perfect. Now we go back and actually you have to create a new class for page objects and page close because this is a new class, right? Flight Finder. New page, new class. as simple as that so now right click on the page objects and create a new class and what do you want to call this class as flight finder flight finder like that so the class name must start with a capital letter and each new word must start with a capital letter again 
and do not use any spaces or underscores so class name must not contain any spaces and do not use any underscores and it, it is allowed but uh, it actually looks very awkward okay now we created this page and the page the class must contain obj word right so we forgot about that so let's refactor it immediately obj and just click finish okay so meanwhile we will create this one also so that it will be ready and this will be called flight finder page right so i forgot about the page flight finder page okay so flight finder page okay so let's do one thing so instead of page in the page objects let's not use so our indication will be page flows will contain the word page and the page objects will contain the word object at the end so we will remove this it's very duplicate again if you want to rename so just go there so i am removing the page word from the page objects because it's very confusing the page objects will contain obj at the very end and the page flows will contain page so it will be very clear you can easily uh, identify what is what so now just go there refactor rename and remove the page and one more to go refactor rename. that's it okay so we will maintain this naming convention forward so let's go to the page finder and store this x path that we have just captured so how do we store again public, public. static final string and uh, first type of object which is a link and name of object which is flights right we that's what we clicked upon so and whatever we captured we will copy and store it in here okay so one is stored and let's click immediately so that we won't forget so let's come to the page first defining define when i am writing the code when i am developing the code i am coming from page objects and go to the page flows then call this infrastructure and uh, uh, page objects in it and then call this page flows in the test that is the order of the development right but when i am trying to understand this code i am coming from this way test case test case is calling page flows page flows is calling page objects and infrastructure and other bunch of stuff so this is the way i you try to understand but development wise you have to come from the other way around so that's what we are doing okay now flight finder page must contain the definitions of what you are doing how you are doing stuff like that right so one know what we are doing you want to click upon it so how do we do that here Hello. you cannot yeah you cannot do everything in the class you have to create a function exactly so the function name i would call it flights okay click flights or something like that public but void click flights link or something and this must be driven by the web driver so you have to pass web driver every time and just open and close okay so uh, this is a new class you have to re-import web driver and we did and what i want to do with this flights i want to click on and how do i click on what is the function to click on driver dot find dot click yes, but that is the old way right we have already uh, uh devil i mean improved from this we have we are upgraded from old uh, linear framework to the module rest framework so new okay so first things first first you are going to call a function from the infrastructure dot operations so when you are calling a function from other class you have to instantiate it right that is yes. the first thing so let's instantiate In operations so p equals new operation we are also use this extend keyword say that again we are also we can also use this extend keyword yeah? no or class 
no 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 yeah that that is later but here all the functions i defined inside this operations are non static right so you must instantiate it you can use new keyword but new keyword is only for uh, when you want to just call two or three times because in this page maybe i will be calling like 10 times so this is a better way so let's call okay what is the function you want to call and what do you depending upon what do you want to do with link click link right I want to click link. I actually click link. Okay. Now driver is passed, and what else do you need to pass? Uh, the pass the name. What what name? Xpath expression Light comes from where? Okay. Flight finder object. Okay, that's why I renamed appropriately. In the flight finder page, I am calling flight finder object. Dot. It is only one variable and which is linked bytes. Okay, that's it. So that will actually click on the link and I want to immediately test it out. Okay, the best way to test it out is go to the test case and call it. Okay, so that you won't get, uh, I mean, you won't get lost later. So let's Create the export, call it in the page flows, and call the page flows in the test case immediately so that you won't. Okay, so we are doing away with the signing. The reason I told you because it won't store the credentials. So we are doing the flight reservation immediately. So that's a to do for us. So we are doing right now. So I'm doing to do and flight finder. Flight reservation is, uh, I'm flight finder is a part of flight reservation so flight finder now how do we call it using the new keyword right yes new and flight finder okay what is that you want to call this page. here in the description page. page exactly now dot click flights that is the only function we just defined and bingo now what we do is we actually run it that is debugging and let's see if it's able to click on it or not okay so once we click on it i will call it today continue from <clears throat> oh my bad okay so it clicked on the flights so in the next class tomorrow i will show you how to fill these so this is very important class tomorrow because we are having different kinds of objects which we have and uh, have not encountered before that is radio buttons drop downs we already seen but there will be more practice with the radio uh, drop downs or uh, combo boxes drop downs yeah drop downs bunch of radio buttons bunch of uh, that's it links and stuff like that so we will continue this tomorrow okay so it's okay. already late. yeah okay good night uh, have a good day bye have a good day bye bye can you please send the note thank you yeah i will send the notes into the project too okay, okay thank you so much.